Hello everyone, welcome to Assist Biology. In this video, we are going to discuss about pollen pistil interactions and double fertilization. And this is the fourth part from this chapter, Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plant. I am Assist Kumar Das, a student of MSc Animal Biology, University of Hyderabad. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for getting more updates. Now, let's get started. So, what we will discuss today? First of all, we will see what is pollen pistil interaction and how the germination of pollen grain will take place. We will see the process of the germination and the pollen tube growth. Then we will see what is double fertilization and what are the two events that is syngamy and triple fusion associated with the double fertilization and many more we will discuss in this video. Now what is pollen pistil interaction? As the name suggests this is the interaction between pollen and the pistil. That is, it includes the whole process that is from the deposition of pollen grain on the stigmatic surface of pistil to the growth of the pollen tube towards or up to the embryo sac or to the ovule. Then we will see how this is taking place. This is taking place because the stigma has ability to recognize the right type that is the compatible type of pollen grain. A number of pollen grain may be laid on the surface of stigma but only the pollen gram from, from the same species will lead to the pollen tube growth and germination. So this is the compatible pollen grain and the pollen grain that will from the different species will be the incompatible pollen grain. Then you can see the diagram here. The diagram first of all the stigmatic surface is there. The above and the stigmatic surface. Then the transmitting tissues is there. Then style is there. You can see the diagram first of all pollen capture pollen is captured that is the landing of the pollen grain on the stigmatic surface then pollen adhesion here you can see this is the pollen is adhered to the means pollen is attached to the stigmatic surface then the hydration because it absorbs some of the water vapor and it will enlarge in size then germination you can see small outgrowth like structure that is from arising from the germ pore and this is gradually increasing in size and now one of them is penetrating into the style okay all of these things we will discuss in detail. So germination of pollen grain. This is stimulated by a certain secretion and stigma. That is the pollen pistil interaction is a chemical dialogue between the stigma and the pollen grain. A variety of chemicals is going to be released by both and this is leading to the pollen tube growth as well as so in incompatible pollen grain rejection of the pollen tube growth. Then we will see what happens. The intine growth through the germ pore is a protuberance. We have seen this. The intine growth through the germ pore is a protuberance. As you know, in germ pore, the exin is absent, that is the sporoporin is absent, so it is easier to grow through the germ pore for the intine. Then, this when it will increase in size, this will lead to formation of pollen tube. Okay. Then, contents of pollen tube. What are the contents of pollen tube? That is tube nucleus and the generative cell so tube nucleus is the nucleus of the vegetative cell that is you have already seen pollen grain in most of the species it's had in two cell condition that is one vegetative cell another is generative cell vegetative cell is larger in size and generative cell is smaller in size and in some species the pollen grain are laid at three cell condition that is the generative cell divide by meiosis to form sorry divide by mitosis to form two daughter cell sorry two male gametes that is the then one, one will fuse with the triple sorry one which fuse with the primary endosperm nucleus sorry with the polar nucleus and another will fuse with the x cell to, to form the zygote okay so what happens the vegetative nucleus the tube nucleus that is the vegetative cell nucleus the generative nucleus will move to the tube and what happens the pollen tube grows in most of the species pollen grains are set at two cells and in some in some of the species they are set at three cell condition okay that is with two male gamete and the tube nucleus then the pollen tube grows through the tissues of stigma and style and this is mediated by number of chemicals i have already said this then secretion of enzyme that is for example callose layer this helps in the penetration through the stigma as we know the pollen grain is having a layer of callose also that will help for the penetration through the stigma or style to reach the ovule okay now germination of pollen grain continues where what happens the pollen group enters the embryo sac okay embryo sac is the mature female gametophyte and this is the uh, product of the 
product of the megasporogenesis or mega gametogenesis you can say and the egg enters to the filiform apparatus of synergid this is important concept filiform apparatus of synergid then the germinated pollen tube with tube nucleus at tip and two male gamete that is the fully developed male gamete what is the fully developed male gametophyte germinated pollen tube with the tube nucleus that is the nucleus of the vegetative cell and the two male gametes that is one will fuse with the uh, with the secondary nucleus or you can say the central cell and another will fuse with the egg cell so here you can see the diagram pollen granules there the vegetative nucleus is larger generative nucleus is smaller then what happens to the tube nucleus that is the nucleus of the vegetative cell what happens this is the germination of taking place through the germ pore the vegetative cell arises the vegetative cell form a protuberance and this gradually increases in size you can see and it's moved towards the style or towards the ovule so the two sperm nuclei you can see this this is the product form after the mitosis from the generative nucleus and this grows okay then what happens the tube nucleus tube nucleus guides the growth of pollen tube towards the ovary so this is the important function of tube nucleus guides the growth of the pollen tube and what happens this is an important point you can see the tube nucleus degenerate after the pollen tube reaches the ovary this is only to provide the food to the growing male gametes okay so two male gametes and the tube nucleus reach towards the ovary and the once it reaches the ovary of the ovule sorry ovary of the flower or the you can say the pistil the pollen nucleus sorry the pollen tube the tube nucleus will undergo degeneration to provide the food reserve food now double fertilization so double fertilization means there are two type of fertilization involved here pollen tube releases two male gamete in cytoplasm of synergid okay here you will see the diagram pollen tube is growing okay it is reaching towards the synergids here you can see so what happens pollen tube releases two male gamete in the cytoplasm of synergid one male gamete move towards the egg and it fuses with the zygote this is called syngamy okay and the second male gamete fuse with the secondary nucleus that is the central cell the central cell is having secondary nucleus that is with ploidy n plus n and this form this fusion from the pen primary endosperm nucleus and this process is called triple fusion here you can see three nuclear undergoing fusion that is two from the secondary nucleus and one of from the male gamete that's why this is called a triple fusion okay and syngamy and triple fusion both are collectively called called as the double fertilization this is a phenomenon unique to angiosperm this occur in angiosperms okay then the cell central cell with pen that is primary endosperm nucleus is now called pec that is primary endosperm cell and the function of primary endosperm cell is to provide nourishment to the developing embryo we will see this in later videos now you can see the diagram here two diagram are to display the growth of the pollen tube here you can see the male gametes are there and the vegetative nucleus is there so you can see here the vegetative nucleus is lagging behind and once they reaches the embryo sac or they reaches the ovary the vegetative nucleus gradually degenerate here this is the degenerating vegetative nucleus and how they are guiding towards the how they are guided towards the proper location that is with proper fusion site that is by filiform apparatus filiform apparatus guide the path of pollen tube towards the egg and to the secondary cell okay and what happens here you can see two gametes two male gametes are there one is fusing with the egg and another is moving towards the polar nuclei so triple fusion and the syngamy are two kind of fertilization that is the double fertilization and this is unique to angiosperm this you have to remember double fertilization you can see polar nuclei here endosperm this is the product of double fertilization you can see polar nuclei is there release of sperm cell is there so endosperm is there and zygote is there endosperm is 2n endosperm sorry zygote is 2n and endosperm is 3n that is a triplet endosperm diploid zygote and here you can see what happened what is happening to the embryo sac after the fertilization the synergies are degenerated after they guide the path of pollen tube towards the egg and towards the secondary nucleus the antipodal cell will undergo degeneration all of this degeneration that is a degeneration of synergies and the degeneration of the antipodal cell is only to provide nourishment to the developing embryo and to supply them the reserve food so this is the primary endosperm cell pec and this is the primary endosperm nucleus pen this is trip, triploid in nature this is formed by triple fusion and the zygote is formed by syngamy thank you take care